trees. It's pretty hard not to appreciate trees. Now I grant you, I live in a place where we know we're going to have strong winds and bad storms that continually topple over either very soft woods or shallow rooted trees right over onto people's houses. Which is why you won't find a tall tree next to my home. But you have to be impressed with how much a tree accomplishes. Here we are talking about a plant that is a perennial source of fruit or a perennial source of nitrogen, a perennial source of ecosystem and living area for animals, a water catchment, and so many other things. They do, in fact, provide shade for us, forage for our brand new bees here on the homestead. They provide mulch not just for themselves, but for other plants throughout the property. But it's really what's below ground that's pretty special. You see, trees talk to one another. And they do that either through their own interconnected roots, or by the connection that is made between them through fungi. And it's amazing what signals are transferred because it's not just a nutrient thing. They share nutrients one with another. So your nitrogen fixating plants are also helping your producing plants underneath the soil not just from the mulchings and clippings that you take, but they also can alarm one another. You can have a stand of trees that can be mixed species. They do not have to be the same genus. And one tree can be damaged and can send out stress signals through the ground, out of their roots, into the fungus, into the roots of another tree, and have a different tree respond because of that stress that's placed on a tree to do things like ward off insect infestations. It's pretty amazing. If you really think about it, you could realize just how far behind humanity actually is. These trees have had a world wide web long before we ever thought of such a thing sending signals one to another to tell each other things like here comes the fire or here come the insects try to make your leaves taste bad sending signals out for miles for miles it's just amazing i've watched a bbc documentary called the magical forest and as soon as you're done with this video, you need to go look it up and watch the entire thing. It's a full documentary, it's an hour long, and you will not be disappointed, and you will be amazed. It really stresses how everything in nature connects to one another, and just how little we understand, or just how little we appreciate those connections. Things that are out of our sight, or are not immediately visible to us, we tend to ignore and not appreciate. Just like the connections underground between these trees, there are connections in time, connections between plant and animal that take place, that we can design for, that we can benefit from, but we have to first understand them. And it really is an amazing thing once you start to ask yourself, what is this tree really doing? How is it interacting with this grass that's growing around it? How does it interact with the wind? And as you start asking yourselves these questions, you can start to make observations and really understand the benefits of the humble tree. And I say the tree is humble 
because it just goes about its life. We don't have to sit here and nurture it every day like we do our annual gardens. We make sure that it gets off to a good start and maybe once a year we'll attend to it for either collecting the fruits and nuts or trimming it back so that it can grow or so it can release nitrogen into the soil or so we can use the branches, leaves and twigs for our use to help spread nitrogen throughout the property. But really, it's quite a regal thing. In its humble nature, it really does provide some astounding properties. And one thing that we learned this week is that you don't need to baby them very much. You see, I did monkey see and monkey do. And when we bought these apple trees and cherry trees, we placed these stakes next to them. But one thing we learned is that as much as I want to protect it from the strong storms that we receive, the tree now has a new focal point where I have it strapped to this post. So as the tree does strengthen in the wind, it's going to strengthen at the area right above the connection point instead of down at the ground where it really needs to build up strength. So we've sort of taken away a bit of its own ability to adapt on its own. For all intents and purposes, we left the training wheels on when it never needed them in the first place. So I thought I'd bring you along as I talked about our week on trees for a little bit of practical exercise and permaculture concept. As I remove these, tree, these support poles from these trees in hopes and expectations that our two years, three years of giving them this support wasn't uh, too much to the point where they are only going to be strong up the trunk and not at the base. I think these guys are well established and it certainly is something that we will not do again in the future. There is a lot more that you can learn about trees. And if you haven't made the decision yet to sign up for a permaculture design certificate course, that you do. Obviously it's too late to sign up for the one that we're in right now. But sometime in the future, you're going to be able to find one locally or another one that's being offered online. And I hope that you're able to take part in that because it is amazing as you begin to see these connections, you cannot walk outside or travel anywhere without starting to see the world in a bit of a different way, where you have more respect for certain elements and an understanding on how to use those elements better to the advantage of humankind. When you start to realize that even if you don't live in an area that is prolific with trees, that we can have and do have enough trees and enough understanding to respectfully harvest and replace those trees with even better and more productive varieties that we can build shelters for all of humankind where we can take care of ourselves and each other and not have to worry about change in the climate or change in our atmosphere by doing so. We don't have to worry about deforestation because we understand how to harvest, how to replace, and in what quantities and in what locations and how to manage them properly. We're not talking about going into a forest and leveling it and putting in more trees. We're talking about a permaculture minded approach to structure and human habitation. Next week we're going to step into water. And I look forward to going through that week with you. I appreciate you all, as always, for watching. Please leave your comments below and any questions that you may have. And we'll see you next time.